Welcome to Chapter 16, The Aorist and Future Passive Verbs, The They and Thais Additives. So far we've looked at the active voice in the present, imperfect, future, and aorist, where the subject does the action of the verb. We've also looked at the middles, which talk about the participation of the subject in the action of the verb, or for the benefit of the subject, I loose for myself. But now we've got a couple loose ends to tie up with the aorist and future passive forms. The middle passive forms were the same in the present and imperfect, but in the aorist and future they separate themselves out, and so the passive voice will now be focused on for the aorist and future. And largely they get lumped together because they both add this theta, they and theis endings, so we'll lump them together and talk about the aorist passive, I was loosed, and the future passive, I will be loosed, where the action of the verb comes back on the subject, I will be loosed. So let's jump into chapter 16. Not literally. So far we've covered the aorist and future actives and middles, but we've left the passives for this chapter. The passives use the, theta, eta is inserted for the aorist, and theis, theta, eta, sigma for the future. Very similar insertion to what we saw with the first aorist with the sa being inserted between the ending and the root form of the verb. So this the and theis will be inserted in the same place the sa was. And as we had sigma addition with the clashing of consonants, now we've got to revert to this theta clashing, and it'll be a little more ambiguous, won't be quite so crystal clear as the sigma was. Now the aorist translation will be, as the aorist active was I loosed, and the aorist middle was I loosed for myself, now the aorist passive will be I was loosed, where the action of the verb comes back on the subject. I was loosed. Similarly, for the future, the future active is I will loose. The future middle is I will loose for myself. Now the future passive, I will be loosed, where the action comes back on the subject of the sentence, I will be loosed. Now before we jump into the future and aorist passives, let's look at the principal parts. I've mentioned several times Appendix 4, saying it will bring light to your eyes, largely because it takes each of the verbs and presents the six principal parts. From these principal parts, or these roots, you can basically develop all the verbal options. So the six principal parts that are used to build all the other verbs are the present tense. So for example, we've got balo, I cast. In the future, it becomes balo, I will cast. And so you see that the lambda drops out. There's supposed to be a sigma added, but then you remember this is a lemoner, and so it's got the circumflex and all the gymnastics we did in the future. So this principal part tells you how it goes to the future. The aorist is abalon, and you can see that that's a second aorist. It doesn't use the sa, it changes in the root, and so it's a second aorist. The perfect, which we haven't learned yet, is bebleka, and you can see, we won't talk about that yet, but it's I have cast. And then the perfect middle passive is beble my. And again, we'll catch the perfects in a couple chapters or so. The aorist passive is the sixth principal part, and that's what we're going over in this chapter, and it's ablathane. And so you can see the theta eta there before the noon secondary ending, and so it kind of makes sense. It's got the augment on the front with the a, uh, the blay kind of, is kind of like a second aorist where it collapses and does some gymnastics. 
So the aorist passive form will be the sixth principal part. And from that aorist passive form, you can then develop the future passive off that same root. So the, these are the six principal parts. Now oftentimes when you look at Appendix 4, you'll see that there are no entries, for example, for the perfects. And that just simply means that there, none of these perfects appear in the New Testament, and so we don't have to worry about the principal part. It's not present within the corpus that we're using. So when you see blanks in the Appendix 4 list, it's okay. Relax. Now there's two little tricks to this aorist passive formation. The first is the the gets inserted between the secondary ending and the root. But notice that the secondary ending that we're going to use here are the active endings, not the middle passive endings. So a little difference there, and as we had sa sa everywhere a sa sa in the first aorist, here we're going to have a the the everywhere a the the stuck in in the same place basically that the sa was in the first aorist. So let's look at the formation. First you've got an augment on the front, after all it is an aorist, so it takes an augment, the epsilon augment, with the all the variations with the epsilon before the consonant, with the vowel lengthenings before a vowel initial verb. And then you've got the stem of the verb, lu in this case, from luo. You've got the passive insertion, the the. And then you've got the secondary active endings. That's the nsa meant to n endings. The resultant form is eluthane, and that means I was loosed. So it's really not that bad. You just stick the the in there, use the nsa active endings, and you're down the road. I was loosed. And so are you. Now for the future passive formation, you add a thase, theta, eta, sigma before you place the middle passive primary endings on. There's no augment because it's the future. So we begin with a stem form lu from luo. The passive insertion thais. And then the primary middle passive endings Omai a a tai omatha s the on tai endings, and it becomes luthesomai. I will be loosed. Okay, let's look at the aorist passive paradigm. There are about 886 aorist passives in the New Testament, but only about 290 future passives. So there are about three times as many aorist passives as there are future passives. And the aorist passive is formed like this. First person, singular. Aluthane, you can see the theta eta stuck in there between the lu and the new ending, is our secondary active ending. The nsa meant to n endings are going to be used here. So it's aluthane, I was loosed. Second person singular, aluthes, you were loosed, and aluthe, he, she, it was loosed. You notice the epsilon augment on the front because this is an aorist. The plural is aluthemen, we were loosed, aluthete is you were loosed, and aluthesan is they were loosed. So we've got the augment on the front, the epsilon augment, the root lu, followed by the theta eta, followed by the secondary active endings, nsa menta san. Notice the san here is a little different than the nsa menta n. But it's nice because it distinguishes now our third person plural, san, is distinct from our first person singular, eluthane. So that helps us. 
Now for the future passive paradigm. You begin with the first person singular. Luthesomai. I will be loosed. Luthese, you will be loosed. And Luthesatai, he, she, it will be loosed. You notice on the ending, you've got the thes, theta, eta, sigma, stuck in between the root and the middle passive primary endings, my, a, a, tai. On the plural, you have luthesomatha, we will be loosed, luthesatse, you will be loosed, and luthesontai, they will be loosed. So once again, you've got the primary middle passive endings tagged on after the thes. Omatha estha ontai. Pretty regular and fairly easily recognized whenever you've got the theta eta or theta eta sigma, you know you're working with either an aorist passive or a future passive. And now we're ready for the aorist and future passive chant. It starts out with the aorist passive. Aluthane, anes an, mentasan, where the third person singular an is the dropping of the ns a, the epsilon is dropped out, and just you're left with simply the theta eta form there. So there's just virtually the null form there. So once again, aluthane, ns a, mentasan. Notice the san ending in the third person plural is also unique. So the third person singular, third person plural, both unique in this, this chant. The future passive as regular is Luthesomai, Omai, A, Atai, Omatha, Estha, Ontai. And once again, Luthesomai, Omai, A, Atai, Omatha, Estha, Ontai. And then putting the chant together, Eris passive and future passive, Aluthane, Enes, An, Mentasan, Luthesomai, Omai, A, Atai, Omatha, Estha, Ontai. And one more time, the whole thing, Aluthane, Enes, An, Mentasan, Luthesomai, Omai, A, Atai, Omatha, Estha, Ontai. All right, I think you've got it. All right, it's time for a little theta addition. Now this will be a little bit more complicated than the sigma addition, but uh, just be aware of some of these changes. First of all, the palatals, the kagaka or the kappa gamma ki, when you add a theta, goes to a ki theta. So for example, didask form, when you add the theta eta, becomes a didaxthane. The, the kappa goes to a key before the theta eta. The labials are p and beta when you add the theta goes to a phi. And sometimes when you have a phi and a theta it simply drops the theta and goes to a phi. An example of this is lape and then the goes to alephthane. And so you see the P goes to a phi before the theta. I was left. Graph plus the becomes agraphane. Do you notice it already had the phi, so the theta just drops out. And this is going to be a little tricky because there's no theta to tell you that this is a passive form. So be careful of the phi ending verbs. For the dentals, you have the tadatha, or the tau delta theta. When you add a theta, it drops to a sigma, so you have a sigma theta. An example of that is epath, and then you add the theta eta, becomes epasthane. I was persuaded. 
the theta drops to a sigma before the next theta is added. In the sibilant, the zeta, when you add the theta, also drops to a sigma. So you have doxas, and then you add the theta eta, becomes a doxas thane. And so you see the sigma theta again, I was glorified. So these are a little bit more complicated than the other ones, but largely they go up to the key, the phi, and the other ones drop to a sigma. So it's not all that bad, but just um, I don't want you necessarily to memorize these lists, but I do want you to be aware of these shifts and what's really going on here so that you won't be surprised and your expectations will be heightened. Well, one of your expectations was, what happened to those lemoners? Do you remember we had trouble with those before? The lambda, mu, nu, and rho. When you add the theta, basically three things can happen. Either they can be just juxtaposed with the theta, and then you have a lambda theta, a nu theta, or a rho theta, or sometimes the theta or the lemoner gets dropped out, just drops out of sight. And a third possibility, which happens quite frequently, is that there's a mediating eta or epsilon stuck in to put grease between the lemoner and the theta. And so you have a lambda eta theta, a mu eta theta, or a nu eta theta, or a rho epsilon theta. And so the mediating vowel mediates between the two consonants. Now some examples of this lemoner or liquids and how they work with the passive forms can be, can be seen with balo. It becomes ablathane, and you see that the eta is placed between the lambda and the theta, and I was cast. Agero ends in a rho, which is part of the laminar, and it's agarthane, and here the rho and the theta just compatibly go together. I was raised. Now crino ends in a nu, and it becomes acrithane, and you see that the nu just dropped right out. I was judged. Apostello becomes apestalane, and you see in this case the lemoner, the lambda, stayed in. And the theta dropped out. I was sent. Now, why is this a difficult form? Because you notice in apostalane, there's no theta. So there's going to be no trigger to tell you that this is a passive. You'll just have to know that the lambda ate the theta, and that's all there is left. But there's no theta to give you a hint that this is a passive. Tricky, tricky. The lemoners are tricky. All right, let's just take a look at some of these second eras passive stems and how they work, just to get our flexibility up. Ginomai, I become, becomes agenathane. And so you see there's an eta put in before the theta in this, so that the nu and the theta don't hit. Ginosko, I know becomes agnosthane. That looks pretty normal. Nostesomai is the future passive. And you recognize that the root form in the second aorist is agnon. Didasco becomes adidaxthane. We've already looked at that one. The kappa goes to the key, as we'd expect. Sozo becomes esothane, and the zeta drops right out, sibilant drops right out. The future form is sothesomai, and again the zeta drops right out. Hurisco becomes hurethane. You remember the second aorist form for this is huron. 
So you've got to work the passive form off the second aorist on this. The future passive is Eurathesomai. The thelo becomes athalathane. And you remember the epsilon on the front of thelo hits an ancient epsilon, causing it to go to an eta. Then you've got the eta providing the grease between the lambda, laminar, and the theta. Lambano. Lambano is going to just be some trouble in the second aorist passive. It's alamphthane. And you've got uh, three consonants in a row there, a mu, phi, and theta, all in a row. Difficult to say that one. Lego becomes erethane, or it was said, erethane is used fairly frequently, so keep your eye on this one. You obviously see that this is from Aero, from Lego, and there's no connection on the consonants or the vowels between this one and Lego, so you're just going to have to learn this one. This might be called the return of the bad boys with Lego and Erethane. A couple of examples of how these are translated then. Kai hote aden ho dracon hoti. Ablethe ace tain gain. And when hote the dragon saw aden, he saw that he was cast. Ablethe, third person singular from balo in the aorist passive. He was cast. Ace tain gain to the earth. Second example is apakrithesan kai apan auto. Ho pater hemon avraam estin. And they answered apakrithesan. And you say, wait a minute, I thought that was a passive. And yet you translated that active. Well, surprise, surprise. Apokrithesan is passive in form, but active in meaning. Sounds like a deponent, doesn't it? Or whatever you call them. Actually, maybe a middle form that uh, uses the passive form to trigger the middle. So, they answered is translated into English active. And so, just uh, again, flexibility. You've got to see this form. Apokrithesan, you know the verb, you've seen it before. You say, oh yeah, that's the one that you translate active, even though the form looks passive. It's either a deponent or a middle, however you're going to take that. And said, apon, they said, auto, to him, ho pater hemon, our father, Avraham Estin, is Abraham. One other thing that you should note did you notice that the ho article for ho pater was capitalized? Why was it capitalized? In Greek, this is how they indicate that this is the start of a quotation. It's quoting what they said. So just a couple examples here to kind of trigger your thinking further on these aorist and future passives. Now the vocabulary for chapter 16. The first word is Ion, and it means age or eternity. The second word is Alelon, and it means one another. The third word is Archiirus. And it means high priest. The fourth word is gune. And it means woman. The fifth word is dunamai. 
and it means I can or I am able. The sixth word is ethnos, and it means nation. The seventh word is hosos aon, and it means as great as. The eighth word is polis. And it means city. The ninth word is te, and it means and or and so. And the tenth word is care, and it means hand.